Hi everyone, welcome to Plays a Child's Work. Um, we recently worked on The Tree of Life and I know a lot of people have been asking um, about the books that we've used for The Tree of Life. Uh, so I wanted to do a quick review. Um, I have about six books with me here and um, hopefully this helps you decide um, you know, which ones you want to get for your child and if, or if they make sense at all. Okay, so the first one I want to start with is um, this one. It's called Carl Get Out of the Garden. It's based on the true life story of Carl Lin, also known as Carolus Linnaeus. Um, and it's written by Anita Sanchez and illustrated by Catherine Stock. It is um, a wonderful book in terms of that it explains how about 290 years ago, um, Carl Lin really you know, set about trying to name a lot of plant and animal species. Um, he studied them and um, he decided, he, he is basically credited with um, coming up with the classification and grouping them together. So, you know, while a lot of people may have thought that um, elephants are not related to mice, he did think so. Um, and he he reached this um, you know decision after really studying um, their in, internal structures and you know that's how he classified um, and came up with the the here yeah, the classes. So he had quadrupedia, um, the birds, Pisces, amphibians, insects, um, worms or invertebrates, and he also had an additional one called paradoxa. These were for animals that were rumored to exist, um, like unicorns and dragons. And the surprising thing is that he was so detailed um, in terms of his classification and also how he came about with orders that this system is still used today, you know, 290 years later. Uh, some of it has been updated, um, but a lot of it is basically what he came up with. So. Um, like for example, like the class for mammals is now called, um, you know, it's not called quadrupedia. It's uh, so, um, and then also he had lumped reptiles with amphibians that has now been separated. Um, but he did a lot of the foundational work of, you know, kingdoms and then dividing them into classes. Uh, now, of course, we have groups called um, phyla, which are the phylums like um, whether they're invertebrates uh, or whether they have uh, vertebrates. So this is just a really great book on understanding one person's journey into something that was so foundational and so important to understanding uh, the world around us. And um, that's why I really like this um, book. Um, another thing he came up with was the two word nomenclature. Uh, because he realized like a lot of scientists were using, you know, three or four words and um, this differed all over the world. So scientists could not agree um, about what they were, you know, talking about or referring to. And he said, well, if you don't even know what you're talking about, then um, a lot of knowledge can be lost. So he came up with a really simple um, Latin um, nomenclature of, you know, two words. And uh, that's also why he changed his name from Carlin to uh, Carolus uh, Linnaeus. So yeah, this is a great story um, to read to your child if you're getting started with the tree of life and um, the taxonomy and the classification of the orders. Um, it's just a good, it, it's a good um, book to set a foundation. Okay, so the next one <clears throat> that I really like is um, Grandmother Fish. This seems like a really simple book, but I feel like it's just what, you know, little kids need. Like, um, especially for, not just shorter, even for me, I think this book really simplified um, looking at evolution. Uh, so it, it's, um, it narrates the story in a very simple way. Um, like you can see, like this is Grandmother Fish. She lived a long, 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 long time ago and she could wiggle and swim fast. And can you wiggle? She had jaws to chomp with. Can you chomp? And then it, it talks about how grandmother fish had many kinds of grandchildren. And one of them evolved into grandmother reptile. Um, and then how the reptile then 
you know, um, evolved into birds. So you had a cousin bird and then you had mammals. And so it's a really simple book, but um, I like this evolutionary family tree that they share. Basically, it, it says, um, you know, like we talked about in our tree of life as well, that there are three domains of life. Uh, the single cells which is the single cell lives which is archaea and bacteria and um, the eukaryotes are basically multi-cell uh, organisms so that's your plants fungi um your animals and um and um yeah in in the animals then of course you have your five um classes which is your fish um your amphibians and then you had from the fish you had the reptile the reptile led to the birds and also to the mammals and that's actually how evolution happened and it really does simplify it um, as a parent for you to explain the concept of evolution to your child um, so you know it it, it it tells you how babies sometimes grow up a lot like their mom and dads right like a dog um, a puppy will grow up to be a dog it will not be a fish it will not be a cat um, and sometimes babies are a little different from their parents and some differences you know make life easier some make them more difficult and over time uh, sometimes these differences just kind of add up which is why um, species today sometimes look very different from their mom and dads or ancestors from a very long time ago and um, the other thing I really liked is actually the end note right here um, because it, it talks about correcting common errors so you know instead of saying we all descended from one fish or one pair of fish we descended from a large number of early jawed fish and you know evolution doesn't mean there's a change only in an in individual it means um, changes in a population and these changes add up so when they say that you know grandmother fish uh, left a grandmother um, reptile it's not that it was direct. There were like millions of generations of grandmothers in there and one line of fish evolved into reptiles. Uh, mostly the fish have evolved into different kinds of fish. So, um, you know, it, it, it talks and it really helps simplify some questions the kids can have. And also for me personally, I mean, I think this is the first time I'm getting um, so much into depth into um, these topics. So it's really, good for me to have some sort of clarity and help answer Shara's questions so yeah this one is um, again another book that I really like grandmother fish okay so this one is the one that started Shara's interest in tree of life so um, the tree of life is typically um, you know follow-up work for the second grade lesson uh, which is the coming of life um, and back then when we did the, the second grade lesson about six months ago, um, Shorya was just too interested only in dinosaurs, the ice age, um, you know, the woolly mammoths. And he really was not um, interested in looking at the tree of life or um, working with it. Um, but we started reading this chapter book and I, I call it a chapter book because um, it's, um, it's told in our story format, but it's pretty long as, as you can see. And um, yeah, it's really um, nice because it talks about, um, you know, Charles Darwin and his life. And um, here you can see all the chapters that it's divided into. So we were reading this like about two chapters every night and he absolutely loved it. So, you know, who was Charles Darwin? And this book is actually um, When Darwin Sailed the Sea by Wide Eyed Books. Um, so yeah, this, this one is... Um, it's got a lot of words, but I think if you read it as a chapter book, like one or two chapters, it's really nice because it gives you an understanding of, you know, how the tree of life came about and, you know, um, how um, Darwin set sail aboard the beagle and he used to get so seasick that he would rather, you know, not be on land and be off land and um, how he spent five years at sea, visited different continents across the globe. Um, when he visited Mauritius and this you know um, is beautiful because he also it talks about uh, how he realized that sometimes species which were found on islands hadn't were very different from the ones found on mainland um, 
and that's actually what he credits his um, natural selection to and um, the evolution of species so yeah and um, this is yeah this is a really nice chapter book if you're looking for something on charles darwin um because uh, you know he is the person who came up with um, the tree of life so this is actually the one that he read and then we learned that one of his notebooks was stolen uh, the one containing his tree of life diagram um, so it really motivated Shadia to draw his own tree of life diagram and actually work on it and we have another we have a couple more on Darwin actually so we have this one I'm actually saving this for this one it's called Darwin's tree of life by Michael Bright um, and uh, I'm actually saving this one for when we want to work on individual branches or when Shadia wants to work on individual branches so I'm going to be keeping this as his reference book um, and just to kind of quickly show you the other reference books that he will be, you know, using, it is this one, of course, um, then this, the Encyclopedia of Animals, uh, because I have a feeling that he wants to focus on the class of animals and, um, sorry, um, you know, the, the kingdom of animals and the five classes within that. So your, you know, the reptile, the fish, the birds, the mammals, and the amphibians. Um, and this is great because I've shared this before as well, but um, you know, you can just look up any animal and read on it. And it's just such an absolutely detailed book. Uh, and then of course, these two DK books are also in our references um, because I've shared this one earlier as well, but this one is the first time we actually saw a tree of life right here. Um, and this one was um, really surprising because I, I didn't realize that um, it also had, um, you know, information on microscopic life and how, again, you have the archaea, the bacteria, plants, fungi, animals. And I'll actually be using this for the plant uh, kingdom because here it talks about how they are classified so yeah this is another reference book but yeah coming back to the ones on darwin um so this one is darwin's tree of life and it explains um you know the different branches so it will you know show you the early land plants then some seed producers um because you talk about the ones that don't produce seeds then how the animals rose what, what the simple ones and um yeah, like uh, I hope this one will help him kind of understand how some of the branches are in the tree of life and look at that, uh, the age of the reptiles and the mammals and yeah. So I actually got this one pre-loved because um, I managed to find it and I just felt like it would make so much sense to have one that focused specifically on the tree of life versus just um, Charles Darwin's story or um, you know the story on Carl uh, Linnaeus so this one is literally just the tree of life and the different branches and then we have like I said one more on Charles Darwin so this one we haven't really used um, too much again but I'm going to be keeping it out as a reference book and um, this one, as you can see, is quite detailed as well. It is really, really beautiful. It's a big book. And I'm not... There we go. Can you see this? Yes. So it is beautiful. Um, it talks about, you know, early theories and the voyage of discovery, how he set sail again on the beetle, his ideas, um, and then variations within species. So, um, and then this is where it kind of connects to like how they adapted to survive versus some who didn't survive. Mm. And then how we all have interdependencies. So like the branches are also all um, interconnected. Uh, you know, we have the modification in the species and here this is where it connects to the taxonomy and also Carl Linnaeus um, so it connects that's that's actually why I'm sharing these books together because the tree of life 
is very interconnected to um, taxonomy and understanding the classification that scientists use um so uh yeah this is you know an absolutely gorgeous book i'm pretty sure we're not going to get through um, a lot of it um but um you know i can never predict what shara wants to um look up so yeah that's actually why we have this book because uh, it covers a lot more topics than the charles darwin chapter book uh because that just talked about his journey um and it was more of a biography whereas this one talks about really a lot of scientific themes um and uh, hopefully will last us for years as we delve into it more and more and then the last book i have here is called <clears throat> the natural world so this one is illustrated by owen davies and uh, owen davy and um is written by Amanda Wood and Mike Jolly and it is an absolutely beautiful book i mean i think it's one of those um gorgeous books which is packed with so much information uh it's a wide eyed book it's called the natural world and um i mean again one of those books that's going to last you for years right like um if you look at you can use this in so many formats like what is a habitat what is biodiversity the world habitats um mammals great and small uh but the reason i really like this is again here taxonomy classification levels um i love the use of charts that they have because um even when we looked at you know um this chart uh shorya was um, i mean so was i we were very surprised to know that 95% of animals are in vertebrates only like 4.8% are broken down into fish birds reptiles amphibians and mammals and out of those invertebrates you know a large percentage are arthropods and then of course insects and um yeah i think it is just visually a very very inviting book because it explains to you um you know you have again in plants and animals specifically then you also have the other um life forms like your fungi algae bacteria protozoa so it's all interconnected and i think the when kids read books um which are very visual in nature um it registers a lot more than just um reading information on it so yeah this is like i said an absolutely gorgeous book So yeah, that is uh, the last book that I wanted to share with you, and um, I hope this review helped. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Bye.